Hello and welcome to whatever it is that this is. I'm your host, David. I'm still an audio programmer, in, in a way, a even better one than last time. We're going to be digging into material surfaces today. We're going to be talking about how do we get information into the game based on what material our character is stepping on. So we have our character here. They sort of step on some wood porch material. They step on uh, some stairs. They kind of move up and down. They go onto some dirt, some grasses, some pieces of log. There's all sorts of stuff happening here and we have nothing. We basically have one material. So Today we're going to be taking one approach to that. It's not necessarily the approach that you use for every single game. It depends on your physics solution. However, it is one that you can use in this game because we are the physics solution. We're going to be using the physics material override on each of the materials here. This will mean that applying this to different materials will automatically give you the uh, correct material. So we apply this to something that uses wood materials. You can see here, I have a few physics materials already set up or physical materials are already set up. I'm going to be able to create some new ones within just the audio folder within the physics material folder. And inside this folder, I'm going to be able to do our work. So I'm going to create this from scratch. I'm just going to call this alien underscore dirt. Uh, you can call this kind of whatever you want. It is a physic physical material and you can see it appears in the physical material override. Now, this is applying it on a per object basis and you need to be really careful that the materials that you're adding, the physical material you're adding is only affecting the physical properties, which is the surface type here where we have default dirt or wood. These changes are really important. So open edit, uh, go to project settings and look for physics. Uh, so we're gonna skip past. You would think in collision, but it's not actually in collision. We're gonna kind of go down to physics. We're gonna be able to scroll down and you will find, uh, where is it? The surface types. Now, inside these surface types, you can see we have 62 custom surface types. So you do need to be a tiny bit careful, especially if your programmers are using these surface types on a different field, a different material, a different something. Uh, so I'm going to just add wood planks just to show you that I can. Add dry grasses just to show you that I can um, in terms of adding these material changes. Now, there are two places where you can add these materials. You can either add them to the uh, objects themselves, the static meshes as overrides, or you could add them to the textures themselves, which is something we're going to play with. So I've added wood planks, so I need to make a new material called wood planks. Great. And I'm just going to have a quick look around for the bottom for these wood planks. Let's scroll down and add it to these wood planks as a physics material override as well, just so you get the idea of what this kind of process is like. Great. Now you can see there are many, many materials in this game, and that's actually something we're gonna cover with a Python script in a tiny bit, literally in this episode. Right, so we can see the physics material here. We can change these physics materials around and we can hit save. We should be able to hit play and nothing will happen obviously because we need to check out the blueprint. Inside the blueprint, we can take that line trace that we built in uh, episode five, episode four, whatever the last episode is and check out a print string. We're gonna use a format text node here, uh, which will allow us to, when we use the curly braces, uh, add some variables inside. It's really, really handy. Uh, steps to with two Bs, there we go. Uh, we can use this these curly braces to add a wildcard slot here that we can add in the surface type. If I pull out of the on hit, we want to break the struct, which is the hit result, and use the physics material inside the surface. Great. So when I do take a note, we're going to draw that line trace. And then on top of that line trace, we're also going to take break the hit result and write what surface we stepped on. You'd imagine a lot of these are going to be default. And I'm going to duplicate this whole structure into left and right feet as well. Great. Now back in the game, I'm going to hit play. And you should see when I move around uh, what material I'm stepping on. Now, a lot of it will be default. Uh, however, when I step on some materials, I have dirt and then wood planks. And anytime I draw one of those nodes, I will have wood planks. There's some dirt. 
So we have a functional system. Now, again, this is something that you should probably talk to your physics programming team about. Um, sometimes when people are using specific physics materials, you won't be able to use this approach. Sometimes they're manually tagged. Sometimes they are drawn from the UVs. Sometimes they're drawn from Substance Designer itself uh, if they're using a, an Adobe workflow because there are like quite a lot of materials and objects here, especially if a material has multiple uh, different elements. So you have parts of wood that you want to sound different to other parts of wood, or you have like wood and metal together. In that instance, I want to go onto the textures themselves and add a physics override here, which means anything using this texture will actually use that physics material. And that's really exciting because it means that anytime we use this wood trim texture, we're actually automatically going to be applying the correct physics material, which is really, really cool. When we apply that correct physics material, it means any, literally anything in the scene will have that, which means we should start looking at the materials themselves. There are quite a few materials here. So this is where I start to look at a Python solution or just some kind of spreadsheet solution uh, to manage these materials to check like, hey, have I actually covered all the roof tiles? Have I covered all the wood planks, the road, the wood trim, the wicker baskets, the everything in this game and this is only a template level uh, so the more work you do in these materials the more they get reused the, the better this works now again uh, this structure is just one way that you can handle this by basically opening the materials navigating to the region itself uh, which is show an explorer and you'll kind of get a list of everything within this area so I'm going to open the command prompt from here and open the VS code instance here and list out everything within uh, this directory. Okay, that's just with dir dir. Great, so from here I can actually copy paste all of these materials um, or, or create a script or however you want to do it. In this instance, I'm actually going to create a script because I want to make sure that I only grab the U assets, not anything else. Uh, so I just have a Python script here which goes through the paths recursively and looks for U assets, which I know are assets within the game. So inside here, and I encourage you to look through this in your own time. We're basically going to be walking through the directory just using the OS. Um, if you have Python and you've set this up, it'll work. If you don't, you'll need to set up Python. I really encourage you to check it out. From here, we're basically going to get the current working directory. We're going to look at creating a list of files that we can list out based on where we're from, which is the folder path that we're currently in. And we're gonna print them out so that we can add them to a CSV file later. From here, we're gonna make a new list. We're going to step through each of the root files. We're gonna find anything that is a U asset and uh, print it out, okay? So we get this huge list of textures, which I'm gonna be able to copy and paste straight into a Google Sheets folder. Uh, sorry, Google Sheets file. These are really, really handy. Uh, using anything in Google Sheets uh, will really help you, especially because there is a little bit of manual tagging that needs to happen here, but it means that I won't need to find every barrel that's using a wood texture in the future. So I'm gonna kind of go through this and actually just write what material I think they are. Now, some of these will be right, some of these will be wrong, some of these I might even have to go back into the game engine to check out, but I'm gonna add things like cloth, leather, steel, wood, uh, wood planks, dry grass, creaky woods, plain woods, balsa wood, whatever it is, um, and then just some I'm not even sure of. The benefit of this is I'm sort of doing an audit of the session at the moment, and I'm going to use some of the Google Sheets sort of uh, graphing technology to assist me in this way. Uh, sometimes I might need to go in and actually search for the specific uh, asset itself, Right, and I can kind of have a look and be like, I think this is stone maybe, or it's rock or whatever. And I'm gonna basically go through and add a list of everything here uh, for what it is. I will need to support these later on, uh, but basically I'm gonna open up every single asset that I'm not sure about that isn't clear based on the naming convention. And you can work with your art team or your technical artists here uh, to develop a naming convention that actually gives, this, gives you this information automatically. For each of these pieces, 
I'm at the moment just going to write a name based on what I think they are. But from here, I'm probably going to need to open these textures back up again later and apply a physics material to them if I use this workflow. Now, if I don't use this workflow, it's not necessarily the worst thing in the world. So you can see here, like I'm checking out this water tower. It has quite a few planks and bits and pieces. I could either add one material to the entire thing or add them separately. The benefit of this is that I have an audited system. I have something that will help me. And you'll see in a second when I graph this, that this really helps me uh, to determine the amount of work, the quantity of work as a contractor, as a, as a sole trader. It's often really important. And even when you work in a business, it's really important to work out how much work you have. Now, uh, I like to do a little X as a modifier just so I can shuffle those a little bit later. You can see some of the invalid ones. I'm gonna sort these by uh, numeric uh, or al al alphabetical order, right? So I can kind of get rid of those. Now, if I highlight uh, the B column, right? And go insert chart, I'm gonna get a chart of every material type that I've written out so far, which is gonna give me the best indication of what I have. You can see I have 32% of nothing here, which I'm not gonna cover. Uh, you can have a default here. Obviously, if someone steps on a thing that you haven't covered, you probably still want a default. But for now, I'm gonna get rid of those altogether and it's gonna regraph. And you're gonna see I've almost half of the assets are actually just wood. So probably what I wanna do here, because wood, maybe it's fine in your game, I'm not sure, but what I would like to do is kind of go back through this and just differentiate those wood slices a bit. So I'm gonna find anything that's wood and I'm gonna add some more details. I'm gonna add flimsy wood, furniture wood, wooden planks, uh, and really anything that just breaks that up a little bit. So you can see here now I have like 32% instead of 55%, and we're gonna be able to start doing some work here. Now, why are we doing this? We're trying to work out what our foliage session looks like. I can see here that I have some fabric, foliage, glass, uh, squeaky, which is a bad denominator, steel, stone, tile, wet, dirt, wood, flimsy, wood, planks, furniture, wood, flimsy, wood, plain wood, and cloth. And I actually have a good audit of all of my files here, which means I can go to the foliage stage, which, you, you know, it's this room. And I can add uh, some of these some of these elements. I can add some detail here, and I can start to build our Foley system. Keeping in mind that any work that we do here actually might end up working in other Foley systems. So maybe be careful with how many you have here, uh, depending on your Foley budget or the time you have for Foley. You don't want to necessarily add ten different wood types if you then have every prop in the game being able to be dropped on them. So just be a little bit careful here. Uh, I'm adding this to show you how I would probably go about this based on having like maybe like 15 materials. Um, but every cloth rustle, every footstep, every drop and hit and bullet probably needs to be covered here. So I'd maybe fold back down the wood again for some elements that I don't care about. So for uh, furniture, wood flimsy, wood wood planks and wood flimsy, I might actually just play a wood sample uh, a little bit later down the track, but that's not necessarily where you should start. So it's been kind of a whirlwind and I appreciate that. However, it's a good indication of uh, how to spot a Foley session, how to spot physics materials and set these up knowing that in the future, when your artists add new materials, you can have a tool that scrapes them to work out whether they should have a physics material or not. Or you can take a totally different approach where you either pull from the UVs, pull from the texture map from like substance, pull from uh, a big dictionary that says this texture equals this sound. There are quite a few ways to do this, but material tagging is a really good one to get your head around. And it also just gives me a bunch of ideas for the kind of ways to approach my Foley sessions. So thanks so much for stopping by. It was an absolute whirlwind to go through this stuff. And I know that some of it's not like technical sound design in that we're looking at like Google Sheets, but having these elements that uh, balance out your work, having these elements that are able to be audited and are able to sort of really keep you accountable is the way that you actually complete this work and the way that you complete these jobs. 
So if you want to check out some more of my work, I'd encourage you to follow D Weaver Audio on Twitter. Uh, go to at, uh, go to www.weaveraudio.com to check out uh, both my ambience generator, uh, some blog posts, and some uh, great audio resources with the Audio Resource Atlas that I've built, which is like an interactive audio visualization uh, thing. And otherwise, just follow this page. Uh, I'm doing quite a bit of work in the space uh, across Unreal Engine and a whole bunch of different engines in technical audio, audio programming, and audio design. So uh, feel free to reach out, say hello. Uh, I'm friendly, and if I bite, it's, it's not for that much damage, but you might flinch. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I tried, you know, it, it happens. Uh, we don't, they're not all winners. Anyway, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you next time.